This is Twit. Popular magazines and catalogs of the 1950s featured ads of the Mosley Company, known for their great antenna designs. But for a few years, they produced a very unique ham radio receiver designed by John Clemens of McDonald Aircraft, who designed the receiver in the Thor missiles and responsible for the aircraft marker beacon receivers. John brought his engineering skills to build the CM-1. Here is the story of that unique CM-1 receiver. John Clemens, raised in Evansville, Indiana, I got my license in uh, March the 13th, 1939. I was W9ERN. Tell us about how ham radio played such an important part to your career. It's been a, a center of my uh, growing up and my becoming an engineer. It's the only, re only thing I ever wanted to do was be an electrical engineer and design radio stuff. Right. You were working for McDonnell Douglas across yeah. the airport, right? I had a good job here, but I had been promoted out of doing any work. I was a paper shuffler. I had 700 people in my lab organization, mm -hmm. so so I was a had a damn good job. But I like to keep my hand in by designing some ham gear and stuff. And that's how I designed this receiver. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, it was really just to indulge my desire to be making things. And that's why I did it. To me, John Clemens' claim to fame, although you do, you've done a lot of things in your, your, uh, all of the companies you work, but Tell us a little bit about how you came up with this CM1 and what CM1 means, those well, letters. Yeah, CM1, when I designed this thing, I had a friend at the plant and I said, I'm going to try to get Mosley or somebody to make that or maybe make it myself, but I gotta, I'll got i have to be a company. What should I, I think I'll, uh, how about Clemens Manufacturing? And I said, well, it really doesn't sound too good. The other guy said, sounds all right to me. So I said, okay, I'll be Clemens Manufacturing. And this is the first thing, so this is a CM1. So I took it over to Carl Mosley, and he said, what are you, what's your model number? I said, it's a CM1. He said, well, I'm Carl Mosley, <laughs> and this is my first receiver, so we'll call it a CM1. Uh, I got three receivers and five bucks on every one he sold. And he sold about a thousand of them. And, uh, and he quit. Tell us about the design. It's very unique. It uses just one type of tube. One, one type tube. How, how, was there a reason for that? How did you come up with this great design? Because it works so well. Well, um... I had made some other uh, equipment, a ham transmitter, transceiver, transmitters primarily, and then they came out with these double function too. First they had the 6SN7, mm -hmm. which had two triodes, mm -hmm. and then the AW8A was a diode, uh, a triode and a pentode, and uh, that suggests itself as an RF mixer and an oscillator. Well, the, the receiver has great rejection, and, and I always marvel. I use it on AM uh, almost every morning, yeah. and it's... The input circuit is double-tuned. It's not the uh, most... Most input circuits are a single-tuned mm -hmm. tuned circuit, mm -hmm. but this the signal goes through two, two, uh, from one circuit to the next without amplification, mm -hmm. and uh, it's... Worked out pretty good. Well, I made comparisons with a 2B. Of course, Drake receiver was such an outstanding performer. Mm -hmm. Where what it had that I never equaled was the uh, the AGC performance. Mm -hmm. You could be listening to a weak signal and go send your own reply, and the super duper 
heavy duty signal from your own transmitter came out at about the same audio level mm -hmm. as the distant station. Right. Mine never did, never equaled that. I also had the bearing in here for the drive pinch wheel um, is the shaft of this this uh, mechanism here, the pinch wheel, the drive shaft, is uh, lubricated with conductive grease. So it is grounded to the chassis. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I thank you very much for your time and letting me visit your home, you and your wife, Joyce. And uh, I, I do hope that we can take this story to the uh, to the Ham Nation uh, viewers yeah. and let them learn a little more about the background of what really happened in the early days of Ham Radio. Yeah, well, it's, uh, there's, there are lots of stories there. But, <laughs> um, I've, uh, I watch Ham Nation occasionally, but I'm... We, we usually go to bed by 8 o'clock around here now, at my age, why that's all of us do that yes. sort of thing, and plus a nap at noon. Yes, <laughs> but you get to watch the replay, so that's all that counts, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I have admired the CM1 receiver since the early 60s when I would stop by the Mosley plant and watch them being built. So I thought it'd be special to have John Clemens, its creator, sign my CM1. Thank you, John. I appreciate you signing the back of it. Okay. Well, uh, Boy, that is amazing. Excuse me. From 1962. Look at the shape it's in. It's unbelievable. Well, we, uh, we hope it lasts for years. I hope the tubes last. We'll find some. <laughs> What a great time I had that day, and it happened to be my birthday. Oh, I had a special birthday this past year with John, and we made great friends.